Hi, this is Andrei Sechuk. I continue my audit of Adobe Analytics implementation on 4n.com. In this video, I would like to talk about on-site search tracking issues and will also give you some tips that you can use on your sites. I'm on the home page and you can see that I can start searching for apartments right away. And one of the scenarios is when someone is looking for apartments uh, they've heard about. And let's imagine that I will try to make a search for apartments A, B, C, D. Uh, and as you see, there are no results. And the good practice is to also collect the data about such searches. As you see on the right-hand side, nothing has been sent to Adobe Analytics. And why it's important? Because what if someone was looking for apartments that you do not have in your database? What if many people are looking for those apartments? Or what if um, many people who are looking for apartments that you have in your database uh, make some typos and that's why they couldn't find those apartments? So basically, if you, uh, if you collect the data about the searches with no results, you get insights about the demand of your visitors, of your customers. And this can be a good signal for those who are responsible for uh, apartments that you have in your database. Maybe something is missing, but many people are looking for that. So this is uh, tip number one. Now let's uh, look for something that we have in the database. So for example, summer will, and I will also select uh, the price that I'm looking for apartments under uh, $900 and we'll click search. And now let's review what has been sent to Adobe Analytics. First, we can recognize that in the prop 18, there is a value pointing to I was looking for something less than $900. And at the same time, we also see that in the variables 61 and 63, there are no values. There's something like less and then, and so far it's not clear what it is. But what if I will update the filter on the top and say that I'm looking for apartments from $400 till $900. And if I apply that filter, you will see that now this variables are populated. So basically variable 61 is used for minimal price and 63 for the maximum price. So this is the exactly, uh, let's say the same range that is used in prop 18. So the problem is that if we get rid of the minimum rent price, those variables will be populated, let's say incorrectly. So I don't think that these values make any sense. And especially since we have the uh, upper limit, we should have it here. So 63 had to be populated with 900. But it would be even better if in this case, uh, 61 would be populated with zero. And probably it also makes sense to change the naming convention for prop 18. So why it necessary to populated with less than. It makes sense to populate with zero, then dash, and then 900. So again, if I uh, type in 500, you will see how that variable is populated. So 500 and then 900. This is much better. And if we have classification in place, this would give us many more flexibility in terms of how we can work with this uh, data piece. So we can apply different ranges and apply them to our reports as segments. That would be very, very helpful. Another thing that I want to pay your attention to is if I uh, deselect the filters, so for example, I will enter here $10,000 to have many more uh, pages or apartments. So probably I will get rid of um, that filter at all. And there are 11 pages. 
And if I click to the second page, and we'll review what has been sent to Adobe Analytics, I will not recognize anything pointing out to the second page of the search results. Uh, the only probably variable that we can use in this case is uh, prop 71, but in general it's used for some other purposes. But the idea is, uh, you may want to know how many visitors actually were able to click through to the second, third, fourth, and etc. pages of your search results. Why it's important? Because you obviously want to optimize the very first page of search results. You may want to either show there are more best sellers or the partners that you want to sell, or you may want to personalize the search results so that again, more and more visitors of your website would uh, be interested in booking those apartments. When you do analysis of how many visitors come to the second and uh, next pages, this can give you an idea whether the results on the first page worked better or worse than the default list of apartments. So the recommendation here would be also to collect the data about the page number in the search results. If you have questions or you want to share your best practices as to how to track on-site search, please do that in the comments underneath. And thank you for watching.